when Motoring 90 returns, checking out the Celica. Test Drive with Graham Fletcher. This week on Test Drive, we look at the 1990 Celica GTS. Now, this is the car that will lead Toyota into the 90s. Back in 1970, the Celica nameplate first appeared. Since then, it's appeared on some three and a quarter million cars. The new pinchway styling with the large fender bulges is yet another attractive styling rendition of the popular Celica. Several people pointed out the striking similarities between the lines of this car and two other vehicles tested earlier this series. I'll leave that for you to decide though. The driver is treated to a clean, clear and very logical dash configuration. All-round visibility is good and unlike many cars you can actually operate the heater controls with gloves on. All other driver controls are well placed and easy to use with the exception of the wiper switch. This one you'll have to study the owner's manual and practice the operation for a while to get it down pat. The stereo radio cassette CD player features no less than 10 speakers and the sound quality as you might expect is superb. The trunk is a fair size, but it's the versatility that garners the marks here, and I did like the security locks located on the seat backs. As with most cars that fall into this category, the rear seat room is tight to say the least. The Celica GTS features a four-wheel disc brake setup that is well balanced. During brake testing, the brakes themselves perform very well. It was the poor showing the tires gave that accounted for the lengthy 115-foot stopping distances. Toyota's superb ABS system is an option and one worth investing in if you're considering a new Celica. The 2200 16-valve twin cam engine pumps out a healthy 130 horsepower. This accounts for the good showing in the acceleration test. We managed to reach the 100k mark in a titch over 8 seconds. The redesigned suspension is taut, well balanced and comfortable. During pylon testing, the Celica passed with flying colours. One point, though, is that on anything other than perfectly dry pavement, the low-profile Dunlop tyres are not as sure-footed as they should be. In the snow, they're a complete and utter disaster. If you're contemplating the purchase of a Celica, I would suggest alternative rubber. This week, my pet peeve is to do with the tilt feature on the Celica. Each time you get out of the car, the steering wheel pops up out of the way. You do your groceries, you come back, you get into the car, you start the car, you're ready to drive off. I forgot to pull it back down again. And all the time I drove the car, which was just over a thousand kilometers, I never did get used to this feature. Anyway, now to the scoreboard and see how I rated the rest of the 1990 Celica GTS. The revised suspension setup gives the Celica much better all-round handling characteristics. During the pylon test, the car felt nice and tight, while on the open road, the spring rates offer a comfortable ride. Generally, a very well balanced setup. The Celica's four wheel disc brake setup performed well during the brake test. If the tyres were the equal of the brakes, our stopping distances would have been much shorter than the 115 feet we recorded. At a tick over 8 seconds to the 100k mark, the Celica is quick. The slick shifting 5 speed gearbox complements Toyota's new 2.2 litre engine very nicely. All in all, a well rounded package. Generally, a quiet environment in which to enjoy the superb sound offered by the radio. As with all twin cam motors though, the engine winds a bit higher up the RPM range. This becomes evident in the Celica at anything over 3500 RPM. We averaged a commendable 10.4 litres per 100 kilometres or 27 miles per gallon. I think this is superb given the gusto the car offers. As with previous models, the newest Celica will provide some very stiff competition. The new free revving 2.2 litre engine is a delight to push and the improved suspension allows the driver to do so. In short, another example of just how good Toyota engineering can be.